Drones are probably best known for death on the battlefield, but their use has been changing. Unmanned air power tracks hurricanes, creates 3D maps, finds survivors using heat-seeking technology, tackles poaching, the list goes on. So here are a few ways in which they could be used in the future. Drones have the distinct advantage of not being human, so they can go where we could, but we would probably not want to because of the conditions. Where an area has been affected by a highly contagious disease, the use of drones to deliver medicines or maybe even spray an airborne antidote could work. Whether that be in a volatile area affected by legally contentious chemical attacks or a place where a prevalent disease was taking hold, it would need a concerted combined approach from government and the medical industry and cost would be a factor, but if diseases can be spotted early enough, it could arguably make a difference. Researchers in Malaysia and the Philippines have been using drones to track environmental changes that allow malaria to flourish, like deforestation, thereby allowing the spread of the disease to be monitored and then create early warning systems. Drones are already used in emergency situations. They've been helping firefighters in North America and Australia tackle huge wildfires. I think he had a heart attack. Please help. He's not breathing anymore. Now we'll probably be seeing ones that carry defibrillators, unsurprisingly called ambulance drones. The Drones for Good project has come up with the idea. The makers say it could reach 200 kilometers per hour and tracks emergency mobile calls using GPS to navigate. It's also claimed that it could get to a patient within a 12 kilometer square area within a minute and so increase chance of survival from 20% to 80%. We don't think they've got sirens on board, but that would be pretty cool too. So there's no place like home, and there could be no place like a drone home. There's nothing stopping you and I from buying one of these, and maybe around the house, using your imagination, it will come in extra handy. How many drones does it take to change a light bulb? One, potentially. And how about bringing you your cup of tea or beer and blocking the gutters, checking the roof for damage after a bad storm? The sky's the limit. Or maybe if you're more on the lazy side, perhaps. The thing is, I say the sky is the limit, but it's kind of not really, as there are laws. So don't go flying them around Virginia in North America looking at everything, because you'll probably get fined for spying. There are also laws in Texas and Wisconsin. The Federal Aviation Administration says there are rules like the 400-foot flight ceiling and not flying them near an airport, which has already happened 25 times. Administrator Michael Huerta has said that the FAA is working on a staged integration to possibly allow commercial use, which is basically they want to regulate it properly. In the UK, the number of permits for drones or UAVs has risen dramatically by 80% since the beginning of 2014. A report by the University of Birmingham Policy Commission has said that they could be used by terrorists who want to disperse chemical or biological agents or lookouts for burglars and robbers. Which is why the report, led by a former head of the intelligence centre GCHQ, said there needs to be urgent measures to safeguard British airspace and privacy. And privacy is a massive thing here. Drones can fall into the wrong hands and they can record and capture our daily lives out and about or at home. So you may like the idea of a pizza being delivered to your door or the council's drone coming to pick up some rubbish on your road but then you may not like the idea of being caught sunning yourself in the garden or even when you go and pick up that present that you don't want anyone to know about. So where will the boundaries be if it's being used by, say, the police? And how long would they and companies hold that data? So interesting times ahead, just as long as you know what's circling above your head and if it's got you in its sights. And don't forget, Simon will be uploading his video on Friday where he will be debunking some popular myths.